Hello people, Lucky here. Welcome back to my Elsod LP. Last time we went through shearing of the education entrance and we fought against Duran Knight and I said he's annoying because he charges a lot. It's the truth, believe me. And anyway, today we are going to go through Spiral Corridor and face off the big golem. I have to look at the name, but let's start the dungeon. And if you look at my EXP, I'm about to level up. Let's see if I can get level 40 in this episode. So it's still inside of the Shirin. I'm going to use Falling Dragon. You cannot block this move. <laughs> Sorry, that was... That sounds a little bit annoying. I apologize. So kill Lantern Fly. Another one. Doesn't stand a chance. Another one. And another. Oh, one shot. We have a warp portal. And if you stay longer, the golem falls. Be careful about this. And as I said, it doesn't take the full damage until it stands up. What a waste of time. If I was a little bit stronger, I could kill in one shot without waiting. But I'm not strong. My level is low. I'm going to use Falling Dragon and see it only deals like a quarter. Ouch. You don't do that. So what I was saying... Hmm... I forgot. There's another hidden place. If you go under, you find a treasure chest. And... I got an egg. I believe the egg is the worst food I can find inside of a treasure chest. It gives me only 10% of HP, 12% with my guild bonus. So, uh, I didn't talk about the layout. If you look at the layout, it's n it's quite different from other dungeons. Like, there's not there's not a clear section. Instead, it's all connected. To one, I uh, one room, like there are seven rooms here. I don't know how to exp how to how to what how to describe this place. So I cleared it. If if I go here again, I'm going I'm going to repeat the whole uh, map again. So instead. This time I go upper, and here we go, the crack plates. So last room before the boss. Again, golem fell from the ceiling. Oh, you went over me? That doesn't mean you are going to leave. I believe there are enough monsters. Let's going to use Falling Dragon. I missed the Lantern Fly because it blew over again and it jumped. Annoying. Just die. Kill the final Necromancer and break the door. And we are going to face up the boss. Let's see the name. Teach the Tyrant. You see the tyrant? You see that... 
scary. He is scary. He's going. He's using body press. So because he is so happy, he doesn't like every launch move doesn't work. Oh, go up, get behind. That's his combo attack, by the way. See, there is n there's not enough delay to avoid that. I have no I have no choice but to get hit. And he has some HP, but yeah, he's not he's not hard to kill. Just remember, if you don't get any damage from him, then you're really a pro at this game. And I didn't get the exp I didn't level up, but looks like I I can level up. So see you after I level up. I'm going. I want to show you the. I want to show you the new skill. Yeah, I leveled up. Level 40, which means I can learn a new skill, Moonlight Slash, finally. And I can also learn Counter Switch. I'm going to learn this as well. So. I have to get to a safe place first. This should be safe. So, this counter switch, as the name says, it's a counter. And Moonlight Slash. It is a good skill, yeah. Do I have enough MP? Yes, I am. I mean, yes, I do. So, Let's finally I can show you the secret art blast. So how do I use it? I start with dash axe or I think Yeah XX down XX But Dash X should be easier. It's faster to use. So let's start. Oh, I'm so excited. So, dash axe, connect with... Failed. Excuse me. I, com I forgot that I switched my skill setting. So, dash axe, use... Pulling thrust, and keep spam the skill. And you see the blast. So if you press the, uh, if you keep spamming pulling thrust, it automatically connects to your next skill, the A trigram palm, and if you spam again, it's going to connect to moonlight slash. But after that, you have to hold the skill key because you have to charge the energy to use the blast. Yeah, I wanted to use it. And this cut, yeah. Because we are here, let's try using the counter switch too. Like this, it switches, it switch, it changes my and the monster's place. And I can also use a skill node to improve this skill. That also applies to moonlight slash, but. Moonlight slash skill node is uh, uh is selling from the cash I item more, and I need a cash. I cannot buy it yet, but I do have a. Uh, I do have a, uh, come on, this flowing water, flowing water, which is a uh, counter switch skill node. And I'm level 40, which means I can learn, uh, I can write down another skill, uh, skill note. So, right click it, use it, yes, I mean okay. There, I learned it. 
also it increases my evasion by 50% after I success to use it. I mean I succeed to use it. Phew. That was long. So now we got the new skill. Let's see how how well I can use it in the real dungeon. See you after I get into this dungeon. Here we are. Very hard difficulty, but the layout didn't change. You know what this means, right? It's my favorite kind of dungeon. Super armor. Oh, wrong move. I keep forgetting that I switched my skill set. Maybe I should go back to my old one. Looks like I have enough spirit orbs. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, that's neat. So I became box mode because I had enough spirit orbs from the field hunting. But while I was sneezing, my party took care of this room. That's the maximum cannon raven base raven skill. I don't like the skill. Is this strong? I haven't played raven at all, so I cannot. I'm not sure, but there should be a better skill to use in the dungeon. Let's use Falling Dragon here. You know what? I cannot change my skill to... Uh, like, after I use it, I, I cannot change my skill to Pulling Thrust because I changed my skill setting and I'm still not used to using it. Oh, by the way, this counter switch cost only 10 MP, which means I can cancel my skill with uh, less cost, like this. Going to use my Falling Dragon here. Whenever I have enough Spirit Orbs, I'm going to use it. Ah, uh, and did I mention that my max Spirit Orbs, num uh, my max number of Spirit Orbs increased? There were seven, but after I become I became forty, it increased by one. So I have total number of eight, which makes my Falling Dragon stronger. And is this Yelling Guardian coming? I think he got lost. Yeah. He's losing HP because he didn't come in time. I believe he's going to die. No. That was lucky for him. Good job, Shelling Guardian. Then my next problem is, can I get enough MP before, I mean enough awake before the boss? Oh, that was a total waste of my spirit orbs. How sad. But, finally I can try my new move, Blast. Let's see how well it works. So excited. Awake, Dash Axe, Chain my skill, Charge, and Blast. Boom. It was KD, so it was not as effective as I expected. But, it's 
20 years. And it looks like I also got boss drop floating stone what? Apulet? I'm sorry I have no idea how to re how to read this. I have to study English. Ugh. So it's an arm accessory which gives me come on. Which gives me attack speed and awake time. But again it doesn't look that good. I don't like it. So I'm going to s probably sell. So that, uh, did I clear the spree quest? No. And I, I believe I also didn't check if there was a quest. Oh, I can start a new s skill quest which unlocks this one. Fierce Tiger Strike. Which I'm probably not going to learn. But it doesn't hurt me to un I unlock because I may use it later. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and next time we're going to run Underground Chapel. It, it's a church, church based theme. I... I... Honestly, it is my favorite dungeon. So, see you next time.